Hello, everybody. I think my brother-in-law, Keith, asked me to speak about my memories of Central because he thinks I am one of the oldest living member members. But I would like to remind Pastor Keith, we are the same age. My parents, Sydney and Helen White, were instrumental in the establishment of Central. And for me, Central has been my only church. And even though we have come through some hard and difficult times, Central has always stood for the truth. One of my earliest memories as a very young child was meeting for Sunday school at the house at Central 74 Brand Avenue. That house would eventually be renovated into our church. We met on the second floor and to get to the classroom, we had to climb some very steep stairs. Today, it would have been deemed a fi fire hazard and the house would have been closed. But all God always kept his hand of safety upon us. Mrs. Edie and Mrs. Woodman cared for us in our pre-primary years and taught us how much Jesus loved us. I might mention on the same floor was the Parsons for two of our pastors, Reverend Miles and Reverend Loveday and their families. Although the church has been torn down on Brand Avenue, the adjoining building that was built as our Sunday school building as the church grew is still known as Central Professional Building. That building today is being used to heal people's physical needs. But for years prior to that, it was used to meet the important needs, the spiritual needs. Countless children heard the gospel in Sunday school, Pioneer Girls, Boys Brigade, and countless youth events. It was my privilege to serve as a Sunday school teacher at both Braddon Avenue and at Fairview Drive. As I look back at 90 years at Central, much has changed. On Sunday, ladies came dressed in their finest dresses and matching hats and gloves with a linen handkerchief in their purses. Men in suits and ties and children in an outfit kept especially for Sunday. Can you imagine my daughter, Mary Lou, doing that today? Sunday night was our evangelistic service. To begin, we had a rousing song service, often with testimonies given. A strong gospel message was given with an altar call at the end. Central would have once a year, a week long evangelistic campaign. And many came to know the Lord Jesus during that week. Also in the summer months with an open air meeting down on the Market Square, which is now the Eaton Square. And faithfully, as the service was on, Bill Mesh would give out tracts. Bill Mesh was the father of Nancy Tutho. I can't remember exactly when we started broadcasting our morning service live over CKPC once a month. But during one of the service, one of our dear elderly men sitting in the very front row let out a very loud snore that brought a few snickers across the congregation. Central has always been strong in sending and supporting missionaries. And some of our first missionaries were Mr. and Mrs. Ruff, Mary McDonald, Mary Vanderlip, Hazel Rigglesworth, Dr. Bob and Balva Foster, Ruth and Ray Nicholson, Harold and Marilyn Vanderlip, Keith and Ann Donald, and many more. When they left for the field, they were gone for four to five years, and the only contact would be by letter. And that letter would take up to about five weeks or six weeks to get here. I could go on, but time does not permit. Thank you for letting me share a few memories. I am thankful for my church. <clears throat> Ken and I were baptized here and married. 
Our children had the privilege to be taught by wonderful Sunday school teachers and pastors. My prayer is that God's word will always be faithfully preached, that prayer will be always the powerhouse of our church. Faith of our fathers, we will be true to you till death.